all of the rules are flexible because you're dealing with humans. There's 8 billion people on the planet. Guess what? What didn't work with this person may actually work with this one. I'm commiserating with them in their pain. Yeah. So by doing that, I'm enhancing their pain yeah. so that later I can be the, the, the knight in white armor, right? The saving yeah. grace here. Welcome back to another video in this How to Be a Real Estate Closer series. I'm here with Daniel Quijano. Daniel, how are you? Doing great, man. How are you? This has been really fun. I love the videos we've done so far. Guys, we're going to get to in a second here li a live seller call that I did where we're going to break it down. And if you missed the last one we did, it was fantastic. Uh, a great learning experience because we, yeah. we literally stopped and talked about what was happening, why it was happening, the psychology around it. And so if you're trying to learn how to be better on the phones, trying yep. to learn sales better, this is a powerful series for you. Yeah, a thousand percent. And just for a little bit of context, guys, the, this was born out of a competition that we did called the Closers Oct Octagon um, in Arizona here recently. And it's crazy because in one day, we had 10 closers, 10 people who do this business every day from around the country. And in one day, five to six hours, we had 11 contracts done, mm -hmm. 22 properties locked up. Right. Yeah. In one day, yeah. which says a lot. And why do I why do I emphasize that? Because a lot of people will look at this and they'll be like, oh, well, I, you know, I don't have good leads. I don't have this. These were just regular leads that just like anybody else could get. Mm -hmm. But it, it goes to show when you have the skill, what you can do. And you did five contracts mm -hmm. in just over five hours. Yeah. Right. So I think people can probably say that you, you may <laughs> know what you're doing in these conversations. Right. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, 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 I showed up to compete. I mean, yeah. like I had it was game on and yeah. um, I had a lot of fun. And I spent most of the time just trying to get a hold of people. So it, it really came down to when I'm on the phone with somebody, how do I be as effective as I can? How do I communicate clearly? And yep. how do I get to a contract? Like I was all, I was hyper-focused on how do I get to a contract and make a deal out of this? Yeah. And so we're going to listen to one of those calls right now. And this was another creative finance call. We'll, I think we'll try to get to maybe ones that didn't go well. Um, this one actually went well. It, w it ended up being a two-part. So I did another call to then actually close. He called me back. And, okay. But this part's really powerful because like the last breakdown we did, you'll see some a, me asking a lot of questions. It's about the right time and it's about the right tonality. And it goes back to a lot of things we've been talking about, which is how do you mirror? How do you find someone's personality? How do you uncover objections? Yeah. And how do you solve problems? And I think if you can get to the root of this, that's really what we're here to do. Solve problems. Yep. Help people trust and like you. Be the one that's going to solve whatever things going on in their life that they need solved. Hundred percent. So, without further ado, let's jump into this call. It's a ten minute thirty three seconds call. Good afternoon, Autoglass. Yeah, hi. I'm looking for Steven. Autoglass, how can I help you? Yeah, can you hear me? Is this Steven? Yeah. Yeah, hi. I'm. My name's Jerry. I'm calling about your property on Fifteenth Street. Are you still looking oh, to sell that? Yeah, 15, yes, sir. Always. Great. Okay, did you see how excited he got? Yep, immediately. So guys, we're 18 seconds in. Now he answered auto bus or something like that. So it's a, he's a, he owns a business. Yep. Okay, so instantly I'm like, okay, business owner. Yep. Because he said, hi, auto bus. I said, is this Steven? He said, yeah, hi, auto bus. So you know this guy's answering his phone all day. Yeah. And let's be honest, some of you newer people out there would have heard that answer and just hung up the phone, said you oh, had yeah. the wrong number. Guys, keep, keep pushing. You yeah. never know. Yeah, and also context here, uh, these were leads where these people inbounded or however, we don't, maybe not, but these were already warm leads, meaning yeah. the service that did this competition, they had already spoken to these people, they had said they want to sell, they gathered a little bit of information and then passed it on. Yep. So I'm now doing a follow-up to what I'm assuming is a seller who wants to sell. Correct. Great, great. So what are you looking to get for it? Okay, there we go. 22 seconds in, I'm asking price. It's, it was about the same amount of time as last uh, so, time, right? So yeah. my, my intro is very, very similar on these type of leads is it's, I'm, I'm calling about this XYZ property. Do you still want to sell it? What's your price? Yeah. Three questions. I'm calling you about this property. Do you still want to sell it? And then what's your price? Literally in the first 30 seconds. Yeah. Okay. What it's worth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what it's worth. What it's worth. Now, guys, this is a business owner. Yeah. So he understands sales. He understands marketing. He who names the price first loses. Yep. Right. So I already know going into this thing, okay, he's probably not just going to lay this down for me. Is sure. He? You know what I mean? So let's see what happens. Okay. Because there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, I'm I just, just pulling it up. It's nice. 
I'm just having oh, got a lot of. I just don't have the time to go back and forth and take care of everything. So it's just kind of wearing me out. Is it an investment property or first? Yeah, we have it. At, we have it at Airbnb. Oh God. Okay, so guys, what in 44 seconds? What have what have we gathered? What kind of seller is this? If you guys know your seller leads, this is a tired landlord. Yep. Okay, so I asked, is this an investment property? Because he said I'm tired of going back and forth. Now I don't know anything right now, right? Like I'm just he's one of our leads we call. So he's he said we're doing Airbnb and I'm tired of dealing with the property. Yep. We've we've uncovered that this is a tired landlord now. This is where like my experience gives me such a competitive advantage because I understand a tired landlord. Yeah. I know their pain points. I know why we're talking right now. He's a mom and pop. He doesn't have a big operation, so he doesn't mm -hmm. have systems and processes. He already owns another business. He's, you, he clearly is busy because yep. he owns another business. He answered, hi, Autobus, you know, whatever mm -hmm. Autobus is, but he's got a business. So now I'm able to now direct somewhat in, in under a minute. Now I kind of have an angle, yeah. a direction I want to go. now. I'm totally open because this may go this way or it may go that way. I don't really know, but I'm taking the information and now I'm going to start to ask smart questions. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, Airbnb is a lot of work, huh? Oh, you can say that again. Is it is it going well for you on Airbnb? Well, there's days that it's... Pause that real quickly. Like, just, you do this all the time, Jerry. Like, you always double down in the important places. Right, because this is going to be something. It seems like an insignificant question, but this is going to be something that plays a big role down the road, right? So when he says, "Oh, I did Airbnb," oh, Airbnb is a lot of work, huh? Right, guys, pay attention to those little those little nuggets because they make a big difference. With tired landlords, the one of the best ways that I build rapport and trust with a tired landlord is I I collaborate in their misery. Yeah, and yeah. their misery is they're they're sick and tired of tenants. Mm -hmm. So. Most tired landlords have had bad experiences with tenants and it's the tenant's fault. It's yeah. not a mismanagement thing, of sure. course. It's the tenant's fault, right? Yeah, so I, I engage in that. Mm -hmm. So like, let's say this was a single family long-term resident. I'd be like, man, isn't, isn't, aren't tenants just hard to do? Yep. Oh yeah, this tenant, this and that. I'm like, oh my gosh, I know, right? Like, yeah. and now I'm commiserating with them in their pain. Yeah. So by doing that, I'm enhancing their pain Yep. So that later I can be the, the, the knight in white armor, right? The yep. saving grace here. Now, let me talk because there's going to be people who are listening to this. They're like, oh, well, isn't that manipulative? You're trying to confuse people. Guys, no, you're not. Because at the end of the day, we, are not, we can't force anybody to sell a property. That's not our goal, right? But this guy got excited at the prospect of selling the property. Well, if that's the case, then why is it important to do what Jerry's talking about? Because people... All of us, yourself included, we have this habit of getting in our own way because we're distracted, life's going on. And what happens is if you're not in a position to solve their problem when they need the problem solved, that problem remains. And sometimes the best way to get them out of that problem is to get them to say, hey, I know you're not really paying attention to this right now, but let's stop for a minute and revisit that night. You were sitting at home with your wife or your significant other and you guys were miserable and you were upset and you were stressed out, right? You're not thinking about this right now, but that night is what prompted this conversation. And sometimes to get you to remember that, I have to walk you through reliving that moment so that way you don't have to relive it again, right? Yeah, I mean, think about human nature. Everything we do, every decision we make is either to gain or to avoid pain. Yep, gain pleasure, avoid pain. That's right. Yep. So in a tired landlord, they're trying to avoid pain now. They're mm -hmm. tired of the property and all that it's doing. Now I asked, how's it going? Because what I want to start to uncover here is this, this, is this you're tired of managing or is this mismanaging? Yep. Like, are you not running this well or is it just you're tired of dealing with it? There's a big difference. Yep. Or should I say yeah. weeks? Then there's weeks where you're like, wow, those count. <laughs> but I mean, that's normal. So he said there's good weeks and there's bad weeks. Yep. That's normal, right? Yeah. I'm commiserating with life. Mm -hmm. It looks like you bought it a couple years ago. Yes. Sir. Okay, now remember, guys, I'm, I'm on Zillow right now while we're having this conversation. I pull it up on Zillow. I don't pull it up until we get on the phone because I don't want to waste my time copying something I, ha I don't even have to, someone to talk to about. Yeah. So I'm on Zillow, and so that's why I'm asking, I start to ask some questions. Okay. And I didn't, th and I didn't think it was going to be that much, that much of a, you know, like, I didn't think that, cause right now it's like, oh my gosh, I got a kid doing this, I got kids doing this. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm just worn out. Yeah, it's never as easy as they tell you, right, doing well, investing. 
Exactly. That's like the hard part. Then again, trying to cut yourself in yeah, half. Like the, you take, you know, do the fatherly duties. Then yeah. of course you have the Senate that tells you other duties. So it's just like nonstop. Do you get a lot of uh, tenants that call you like in the middle of the night wanting to know how to reset the password and stuff like that? You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like real stupid stuff. I know how to talk to a tired landlord. Yep. Like, what's the lock email. Code? It's like, it's right you there. Know. I gave it to you. You know, and it's nine times out of ten, it's like usually someone's a little bit hammered. <laughs> so, guys, if you don't know anything about overnight rental, then you don't know what questions to ask. Mm-hmm. But I do. I know. I understand that market. I understand what that is. I have Airbnb. I've gotten the calls at midnight where they're yep. like, I can't get in the property. And it's like the freaking, I gave you the, I gave you the lockbox code. Like, why can't you open the door? Yep. And what, how, I don't know how to get on the internet. Well, it's right there. You know, like that's what that's what overnight rental people deal with yep, every single day. Every time. Every time. So I'm like, I'm just I'm pushing the knife in and I'm twisting on his pain. Yeah. Just to accentuate it, knowing that first of all, is this your pain? Like, are you are you really in pain here? Yeah. Is it this? Is it that? Can you can you relate to tenants that do that and and guests that do that? And and then him kind of now and he's also opening up because when people share their misery and you're and you're commiserating with them, they feel in company now. Yep. They're and, they're relating, they're trusting more. And what did we discuss in, in the previous videos in the series, right? They need to feel understood, right? Yeah. And when you're doing this, you're helping to feel that. He, he's like, this guy gets me. This guy gets my pain. Yep. He knows what I'm going through. Someone's just too, I don't know. They're just too lazy or they're just too stupid. I don't know. Too lazy or too stupid. <laughs> I think it's just a lot of it is just like, I'm so lazy. I think that's what it is. Are you, you know. selling it first? Yeah, it, it's, I'm not taking anything out of it. So I said, are you selling it as is? So another thing here, guys, is um, I'm in total control of this conversation. Mm-hmm. Like I'm leading the conversation. A lot of times if you're when you're inexperienced, if, if there's a moment where now the seller's leading, then you've lost, you've lost the yep. game now. Right. So you said it. You said control and confidence. Yep. So I'm very confident and I'm totally in control. And how am I in control? Well, I'm leading the discussion. I'm asking the questions. Mm-hmm. He's he's telling, basically, he's telling me why I should buy his house, not 100%. me telling him why I should buy your house. Yep. Big difference. Yes. What you okay. see is what you get. Yeah, these, so these pictures on Zillow, is that what it looks like right now? Yeah. Yeah, it looks nice. So, I mean, if you go in there and it's like- And it was nice, house, it was fully furnished. Like I really? yeah. wife, I was like, I'm not gonna take anything out if somebody wants to buy it, you know, that's up to them. If they don't like yeah, it, they can play. And you paid, uh, looks like you paid about five, five eighty something for it. Right. Yeah. Now, this is something I do quite a bit. I don't know if a lot of other people do this, but um, I want to, I want to establish right now what kind of equity we're talking about, and I want to draw a line in the sand with the seller about what you bought because he bought it recently. Now, if he owned it for a long time, maybe I do this a little differently. But he just bought it a couple of years ago, turned mm-hmm. it into Airbnb. It's a duplex. That duplex. So he rents both sides independently okay, and fully furnished. And it's like a, it's like a walk to the beach. Okay. It's a great, you know, um, overnight rental vacation property. Yeah. And I see though, cause Zillow tells you when the last sale was. So I'm like, okay, this guy just bought this property. He bought it at this number. And so I'm trying to get into his head and he's an investor. So I understand how investors think I bought it for this. If I can sell it and make some money, I'm good. Or, Hey, I'm just looking to get out what I got into it. So I'm just trying to go down a road now of understanding his predicament. Yeah. So I'm asking questions to try to understand and get in his head. Now, I'm going to say something and people are going to get offended and I get that. But this is where, you know, this is a jab to the, to the process community where they think everything is a sales process, right? Because here's the reality, Jerry. You have a foundation. You have a format. But none of the conversations you've listened, we've listened to from you are following any specific no. process, right? It's not this question, then this question. Other than the very intro, I do ask those Other than the intro. But from there, it's all about the right questions at the right time, given whatever he tells me. Correct. And this is where I'm going to say this. Now, let me qualify this. Guys, if you're brand new and you've never done this before, get yourself a script, get yourself a process, get yourself the reps, right? Because the more comfortable you get with doing this, that's what puts you in a position to be comfortable navigating things. Unless you, unless you have somebody that's coaching you on how to navigate these conversations hand on, you need some sort of a, like I look at, I consider a process, their training wheels on a bike, right? Yeah. 
And when you're beginning, you need those training wheels. But the second you want to go off road and you want to start mountain biking and start doing all of these exciting things that need to happen in the conversation, the things that used to help you now get in the way, right? You need to get those training wheels off. And so this isn't to replace, but understand that there is something that's past the process. And what's past that is really understanding people and having good, good conversations. And it doesn't mean that it's not structured. It just means that it's structured differently. And that's what I love about these calls. Yeah, great. And, so you know, we, I'm guessing, you know, it's right and, you know, interest rates are getting better. So I'm guessing, you know, still in the same ballpark. Yeah, that's the problem now is because what kind of rate did you get when you bought it? Oh, I, I paid out flat for it. I had a property in Denver. Like a 1031? Oh, yeah. So I didn't quite catch what he said. He, he sold something or whatever. And so I said, wait. So I'm listening, right? I'm always listening, always listening. So I uncovered he paid cash. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that tells me a lot. Yep. Tells me a whole lot. Well, it tells me automatically we're not doing sub two. Mm -hmm. so that's great. So now I don't even have to talk about taking over payments or anything. Correct. He has no payments. He owns it right. cash. It's different than the other call. Way different, right? right? And here's what here's another thing we're doing. You know what else we're doing? Again, once again, you want to understand the the you want to do fact finding but you're also doing profile building, right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm starting to get a picture of the type of person that this is. Business type. owner, yep. dad, he mentioned, you know, kids and yep. time and- He's probably a pretty organized guy. Yep. He's got his ducks in a row, a little bit of a kind of an excited personality, right? He's a little bit talkative. You can leverage that in your conversations and your negotiations. And I'm, and I'm looking at his pictures on Zillow because he tried to sell it, same as the last one. He, mm -hmm. had it, he had it up for sale. Yep. And so there were all these pictures and I'm like, this is immaculate. Like yep. this guy's anal. He's, yep. a, he's a type A on top of his game. And here's the thing. Personalities like this, they tend to be really emotional. And you can leverage that in your favor mm -hmm. by talking about the pain, talking because they start getting those blood, this starts boiling again. Yeah. Right now you're able to, to kind of direct the conversation. Yep. Hello? Yeah, I definitely paid cash correct. Okay, sorry, you, I, you cut out a second. So you paid cash. You don't have a loan on it. No. Got it. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, the Zestimate's calling it 625. Does that sound about right? Um, that's what I'm guessing. Right about yeah. there. Now, remember, he hasn't told me his price because he yeah. said the best price, right? I mean, like and I how said, come you haven't listed it with a real estate agent? Okay. Powerful question. Yep. That's uh, a pull away. This is, yeah. That's a pull away. So why haven't you listed this with a real estate agent? Now, that's not a tactic. I'm genuinely wondering mm -hmm. why, are, because you're not in distress. You yep. own it free and clear. I mean, you're tired of managing it, but if you want top dollar, why don't you just list it with a real estate agent yeah. and sell it? It's, a, it's actually a very good question. Very good question. It's not any And it's kind one of you, have to, you have to get it out of the way because if you don't and you're like, oh, I don't want to bring that up because then he's going to want, let me do all of this. If you don't get it out of the way, it's going to come well, up at some point. There's a reason why. I mean, Correct. it's not that he doesn't know to do that. He yeah. knows to do that. He yep. just, why isn't he? Mm -hmm. So I really need to find this out because I still haven't identified why this guy is, why we're talking. Yeah. The reason why, because I figure you listen with the real estate agent, they're going to come in with other fancy little mumble jumble. You got to pay for this, pay for that. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah, you're going to pay commissions and then a buyer is going to nitpick you to death on stuff. You end up going in there doing things. Yeah, I get it. No, and I just figure, you know, as is, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we do. We'll buy it. Okay, so that's a, that's a very typical, I don't want to pay commissions. I don't yeah. want to deal with, I just don't want to deal with agents and showings and commissions and inspections. But listen to the way you did it, right? You mirrored what he did and then you doubled down, right? Ah, they're going to come up with all their stuff. Yeah, they're going to nitpick and the commissions, right? Like you can say, yeah, they're going to charge commissions. Or you can say they're going to charge commissions and then they're going to do this and they're going to do that, right? The, the tonality, the way you're making it feel is so much more important. Agreeing with him. Mm -hmm. You know, like I try to agree with sellers all the time. When you see me do my agent calls, one thing I've learned with agents is agents have egos because mm -hmm. now they're market experts. Correct. They've been through training, they've been licensed. They're licensed. Come on, Jerry. They're not market experts by any stretch of the imagination, <laughs> but they think they are, so I, I leverage that. Yeah. So I say, well, what do you think? What do you think the value is? Well, what, yep. what would you do to this property? Yep. How, what would if, if I buy this and resell it, what, what do you think I need to... And, they and now they feel like yep. I'm important, this guy values what I think, mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, they totally open up. They totally trust me. And it's because I'm relating to them and, and playing on that ego they have. Love that. As is, you know, all cash. Pay the closing fees so it doesn't cost you anything. Make it super convenient. And that's what but, I was looking at. And that's what I'm yeah. looking for. 
So here's why we're different than an agent. So now I'm drawing a, a different, I'm differentiating from an agent Yep. to, to accentuate how I'm different. And here's the thing, you already, you're, now you guys are on the same page. You're already getting him to agree with you. You haven't come to a deal yet. There's not a yeah, deal no yet, deals but you're on the same page. You're yeah. agreeing with what we want, which makes the deal part that much easier once you yeah. get there. But the challenge with, with that is my investors want like a big, big discount, right? For cash. So, so this is what I call anchoring. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is anchor with, with cash, but because I'm not a one trick pony where I'm just a low cash offer guy, and I can do creative, I can do novations, we'll even list, yeah. we'll even list retail yeah. if someone if that's what they want. Sure. My goal with sellers is, if you wanna sell, I'm gonna find a solution for you yep. one way or another. Yep. And it doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter where your motivation is. If you want full retail, I got a solution. Either we'll list it, or I know some agents that'll list it for you, and then yeah. I get a referral, or creative, or novation, or loca like whatever. I just wanna know what your, what your needs are, and then provide a solution for you. Love that. I can get a deal done and I can pay cash, but I got to buy it like below value a bit, right? So again, I don't know his number, but I know he's savvy. I know he knows market value and I'm trying to establish why cash is at a discount. Yeah. That's what exactly. Now there is a way you could sell it. I don't know if you've thought of this or considered this, but you could sell it on seller financing. Have you thought of that? Love it. Okay. Now again, the way I positioned that question was, there's a good chance he knows what seller financing is. He's an investor. Yeah. Now, he might be a mom and pop, or it might be his only property, or like he might be new, but there's a high, there's a high chance he knows what seller financing is. Yeah. Now, if I was talking to you know, a 90-year-old senior citizen, I, I wouldn't assume that they know what that is. Maybe I'd phrase that a little differently. Like the last guy, I said, take over your payments. Not once did I say subject to. People yeah. don't know what that is. Yeah, and it doesn't matter. Right. But people know what take over your payments means. Yep. They don't know what subject to means. Correct. So you, you got to talk in a way that people are going to relate to. Yeah. I definitely thought about that also. Yeah, we do that quite a bit too. I definitely thought about thought that. Thought about it. You already, you already know where you're at. Yeah. Yeah, you're all the way. Now, here's one thing. We did this at the end at the other call. Suggested some alternatives, right? So for the people who are listening, uh, Jerry, like again, you just you're you're like a tractor just plowing through all of this stuff, and you're so good at being tactful with the questions that I think that people will have a hard time disagreeing with you because even if they do, you're it's like he's like he's, he's playing tennis, but you're already on the other side, ready to hit your own ball back if they don't hit it in the direction that you want it to go, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So let's say you're not as comfortable as Jerry is. What's another way you could do that? Well, you could take another three, se uh, three seconds and stop at the question that you're at before you move on to the next one, right? So let's think about the strategy here, guys, just so you guys understand. He's not just, well, he's just a nice guy that people like. No, he's planning. He asked this question because he knows he's going to the next question. And what happens is Jerry gets this much of a confirmation, he's already on to the next one because he knows where he's going, right? Well, if you're not that comfortable at reading, what can you do? Well, let's follow your rule because I love your rule. One of the downsides of creative finance is I think that creative finance becomes a crutch for people not having good negotiation skills, mm -hmm. right? The, oh, definitely. Right? And so now they're like, oh, you want to cash down? Ah, go creative, creative. Let me offer yeah. you some too and I'll give you $100,000 down, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. But I, I, I love the philosophy. It's cash, 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 creative last. That's yeah. where I go. Why? Because if cash is what they need, creative probably wasn't going to solve it anyways, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes you can get around that. But as a general rule... Um, but what's more important is you got to anchor. How are you going to anchor? What's an anchor guys? An anchor is here's where I need to be at the number, but this number is uncomfortable. Well, if we start by talking about a number way down here, this number starts to sound really, really good. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when Jerry says he's anchoring, that's what he's doing is he's saying, well, if I'm going to do cash, I got to get sit way down here. Right. The second he got feedback from them on that, he moved on to the next thing. Well, what if you couldn't sense that? What could you do? Well, you could just sit down here at the cash for a minute, right? Mm -hmm. Just say, well, okay, well, what happens is, I'm assuming this number doesn't work for you, does it? Right? Get yeah. them to buy in, get them to agree with you. Say, okay, same thing we did with, with, the, with the clothes. Well, I don't know if this is gonna work, but what if I suggested an alternative yeah. that maybe could get you closer to your number? Would you be interested in stuff like that, right? Now and I actually, you're buying. in a minute here, I actually do give a low cash number. Love that. Just so he has a comparison to what we're dealing with here with creative. Love that. And I think of it like this. Um, I don't know if you guys, if you guys are watching this, if you're a parent, but as a parent, what I do with my kids is I give them 
two choices and both the choices I can live with. So I'll say, hey, do you want to go to bed at 8 or 8.30? I'll let you choose. <laughs> Not I love that. go to bed at 8 or stay up all night long. Yeah. But two choices I can live with. Yep. And so like, hey, I might be able to pay full retail price. Yep. But if I'm going to pay cash, man, I got to be down here. Mm-hmm. So, so now I'm, I'm giving the seller options. Yep that I can live with and that they maybe they can live with. People want autonomy. They want to be able to make their own choices and you're yeah. helping them to do that. Because guess what? They don't do this every day. You guys do. So you got to be able to let them know like, look, here. And what, you, what, what that is, is it's control. Yeah. So let's hear where, where we go from here. I mean, I would be, I'd be open for that too. Okay. Yeah, if the terms are right, then I can pay your 625 number or 600 or you know what I mean? I can pay your number. Yeah, sure but it would have to be really good terms. So if you're open to having really, really good terms, then that'll allow me to kind of come in, take over the property or, you know, take the property and, and do our thing. And I don't have to come up with all the cash or get a new loan with the higher rates and well, that's, things. That's exactly what I, I'm open for, to that also. It's like the world's best seller. I know. <laughs> He's good, yeah. Yeah. Great. So what, what's the number that if you got, you would be thrilled. Okay, yeah, that's that question that. you asked yep. earlier. Yep. You know, if I could, would you? Mm-hmm. That's sort of that. It's a yep. little phrase, a little bit, but it's basically saying, if I could give you any number, what number would you be thrilled with? Yep. Now, what I'm trying to do here is I've established he's open to seller finance. Great. Check that box. I said to him, if the terms are right, I can pay any number. That's kind of creative finance, right? Mm-hmm. We don't, price doesn't matter, terms matter. Correct. Now I'm kind of like, okay, well, where's this guy really at? What's his number? So now I know what to work off of on terms. Yeah. I'm trying to get to that. Yeah. I love that. There's a couple ways you guys can ask that too, right? I love, you know, what's that number? I like if you could paint, you know, paint the perfect scenario. If you had a magic wand and you could like design that. the perfect situation, yeah. what does that look like? Yeah. A magic wand is great. If you had a magic wand and you could get exactly what you wanted, what would it be? Yep. Okay, uh, I'll do a deal. I mean, just throw something at, at me. That's... He still won't give me that. So throw something at me. You know. Seems right and not, not crazy, I mean, I got, not like shocking. <laughs> no, 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 I'm talking on seller finance. So like, I'm not gonna, on, on seller finance where I'm gonna come at you is with terms, but like, I'll tell I, you right I, now. You know, honestly, I really haven't thought about that. So okay. that's why I said, if you put something together and it sounds right. He does not want to give the number. Yeah. We'll figure something out. He knows, he knows, he, he's a business guy. He who names the price first loses. He yeah. wants me to name the price, not him name the price. Yeah. Now there's a couple yeah. things you can do. You mind if I throw out a couple tips yeah. that people can do? So a couple things you guys can do when you're in that circumstance. It, it, it is a good habit to let the seller give their number first, right? If there, if there's a scenario where I can get that, that's what I'm going for. Try, right? <laughs> Sometimes you're not going to be able to, but I'm going to do everything in my power, right? I'm going to close that door. I'm not going to leave it cracked before I, I notice. Move on. This is now the second time I've asked him, "What's your number?" Yep. Because I asked him right out of the gate, and then now again, yeah, he won't give it. A couple of things you can do is compliment them. So in this context, I'm dealing with a business person, right? I'll pull way back and be dumb and I'll kind of address the elephant in the room. Look, you know, John, I, I get it, right? Nobody wants to be the first person to give their number, but let's, I just want to cut to the chase. I'm going to use things that they're going to, they, 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 phrases that they like, right? I don't want to waste anybody's time. You're a smart guy. You know what you want for this property. I don't want to waste your time and, 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 and be that far off, right? Or maybe I'll say something like, look, you own this property. You did the numbers. You run it. I'm not qualified. Mm-hmm. to give you a number that you think is fair, right? So why don't you just tell me what makes sense for you? So I'm doing, I'm putting them on a pedestal yeah. to give them justification to be, to feel comfortable doing something they wouldn't normally do. Yeah, I learned something from um, RJ Bates where they won't give the price. So, mm-hmm. so he, let's say you ask and they say, no, you name the price and you ask. He'll say, um, similar to what you said, he'll say, look, I really don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste your time. And if you're thinking that the price I offer is going to be somehow higher than your number, I can tell you right now, it's just not going to be. Yep. And it's kind of funny because he's kind of basically saying, if you if you force me to make the offer, it's going to be super low. Yeah. And why don't we just get to the bottom of this? What's the number you want? Yeah. And so it, it kind of, it's a lighthearted way, but yet still kind of a direct way to just prod that seller into coming out with their number. 100%. You know, so that's one more way that you can kind of think about that. So let's hear how I'll show you. I didn't do that. Let's see how I handled it. If I got to come in with cash, I'm going to be, I'm going to be way off of your number. No, oh, for sure. But that's similar. So that's a takeaway. Yep. If I can come in with, with seller finance 
and give you a little bit of money in your pocket and you give me great terms, then, I mean, I'll pay, I'll pay 625 in a heartbeat. Well, I should, yeah, I mean, I cancel it, but you know what I mean? Like as long as yeah, the terms sure. are good, I'll give you whatever number you want, really. That goes back to traditional, yeah, I'll give you the price you want if you give me the terms I need, uh -huh. right? Yep. Create a finance pitch, yep. right? I really haven't thought about like how much, like how much down or whatever. Yeah. I mean, on something like this, I don't, I wouldn't even know. To tell you the truth. It just all depends on: Do you want a higher price that you can get eventually, or do you want more cash now? That's how I would look at it. I almost so look like pay, I want more cash now. What's that? I, I don't know. I mean, more cash now, probably right. Well, not necessarily, because if you want more cash, then I got to pay a lower price. If you're willing to. Do lower can I jump? Can I say yeah. something about that? So, and you may like, so one of the things I noticed is you didn't deliver the first part of that the right way, right? So, this goes back to what I'm saying about guys like understand the power of Jerry's skill set and experience. Where when something doesn't land, not everything's gonna land, yeah. he course corrects and he fixes it right away. There's a number of different ways you can deliver these things, right? So, he asked a question, but the guy was like, Ah, uh, yeah, actually, I, I want the thing that you didn't want me to want, right? Yeah, yeah more <laughs> cash now, yeah, yeah, cash now, okay. right? So, guys, if you missed it, what I, what I was tr trying to say, and it didn't land, which is what your point is, is I said, Look, the less cash down, the more price I'll pay because I'm coming out of pocket less so I can pay more. Yep. The more cash down, the lower the price would need to be. Yep. And where I was hoping he would go would be like, well, I really want the highest price I can get. Yep. Right? Yep, but here's the thing. So this I was is, like, no, not necessarily. And this is why it's super important, right? Because a couple things. One, guys, you are going to make mistakes on your phone calls. The amount of times I've listened to calls with people and they'll be doing okay, right? Newer people, they're doing okay. But then the second they get off track or they forget something or they say something wrong, it's like a downhill tumble from there, mm -hmm. right? Like the it call goes off the rails and they're like, oh, well, I did this the one thing. It's like, well, the one mistake shouldn't have determined the rest of the conversation, right? Course correct, just get back on track. And so what you did is I noticed two things there. One, you course correct really, really quickly. You were like, oh, actually, no. But here's the thing. You have established such a tone of authority in the conversation mm -hmm. that he was scared to give you the wrong answer. And so even though his answer disagreed with you, he wasn't even confident in his answer because he was like, well, I think I want yeah. this. And Did you're you like, that? he said, right? Yeah, he wasn't he said, sure. He's like, more cash down, right? Yep. Because I've established myself as the authority and now he's looking to me. Yep. And I'm then when totally you, corrected, he, you corrected him, now you're back on yeah. track. Because now he's respecting me as the authority. Correct. Because I, I built that, that trust in that I know what I'm doing because exactly. I have confidence. Yep. So guys, it's not about whether you know what you're doing or not. It's less not, about that. It's more about your, the confidence you convey. A hundred percent. I tell this story all the time in the, in the Nightly Dial and in our coaching calls. Brand new to real estate. This was right around COVID. I'm testing it out. Only thing I had seen online was some Max Maxwell videos. That's how I got exposed mm -hmm. to real estate. I knew nothing. I had um, somebody that I knew that got furloughed from their job. And I was like, hey, I'll pay for some leads. Do you want to cold call them for me? Just tee them up. Right? I knew nothing. So they teed up probably like five calls. I think it was exactly five was what they teed up for me. So I called them. Never made a real estate call in my <laughs> life. Never once. Take, you want to take a guess at what happened? You closed the deal. <laughs> I, had, I got four verbals yeah. in five conversations. Yeah. Four verbals. I was like, okay, I just hit the jackpot because it's really... Now, what's the, now to be clear, I closed zero of those deals because there's more to real estate, right? This is where you gotta get connected with Jerry, you gotta get into programs, you gotta learn things because there's more to a transaction than just locking up the deal. But that is the most important part in my opinion is being able to get to that contract. And what I learned there is that I knew nothing about real estate, Jerry. They were saying stuff I knew nothing. I'd never had a real estate conversation before, but it didn't matter. Yeah. What mattered is they trusted I could get the job done. You know, it reminds me of, um, I don't know if you guys listening know, Eric Klein and Tony Montalbano. Um, friends with those guys and they in their first year so they partnered up in their first year wholesaling they did like 2.7 million in, wow. in revenue brand new not knowing anything about real estate 2.7 million in revenue first year but what they did have is they both came from sales backgrounds yep so if you're thinking like it's all about the the real estate Definitely a competitive advantage. I would say for sure that allows me to do a lot. It gives sure. me a leg up for sure, but that's not it. No. 
sales and communication is what it is. It's really, that's where it is. Yep. It's all, it always comes down to that. You do that, you combine, you learn, you get educated, you add the real you're estate stuff, you're a powerhouse. Yeah. Okay. Do lower cash down, like down payment money. Okay. So I said, no, not, nece not necessarily. So now I'm clarifying what I was yep. trying to say. The closing, then I can pay a, a higher price. See what I mean? See that? Yeah, I get what you're just saying. So for example, let me just throw some ideas out. If I paid you six twenty five and I could put like five percent down, and then you gave me like a great interest rate, and I got on a thirty year, right? So I can. What I need to do is I need to be able to cash flow it. Keep doing what you're doing, probably Airbnb. But we got systems in place and a team, you know, to do it. Whereas you're like, this thing's a headache. It's not worth it. And so, like, if you if I could get it for five percent down and I got a really good interest rate, like, let's just say I'd have to run some numbers, but you know, a 3% interest rate with 5% down on a 30 year loan, then I can- Okay, do you guys hear the terms I offer? I'm, yeah. So now I'm, I'm sort of saying, hey, let me give a hypothetical. I don't know if I can do this, but let me throw out some things. So now I'm trying to anchor with really good terms. Yeah. Guys, because I know if I got this thing with 5% down at 3% rate, yeah. I got this is a home run deal. Sure. Now, I don't know totally, because I got to look at like his Airbnb numbers and everything, but generally speaking on a class A property by the water, 5% yeah. down- Where is this? It's in, um, this is in Galveston, Texas. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and if he's doing well on Airbnb, 5%, yeah, that's not bad at all. Yeah, okay. Hypothetically, I could make you that payment now. You're the bank and I do my thing and, and you're now, and then eventually when I refinance or sell it or whatever down the road, you get the full 625 now, so you, so you it's like waiting to get all the money later or more money later or less money now or more money now, less payment now. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. 100%. Yeah. So like, if, and if you said to me, Hey Jerry, I don't need any money. I'll do zero down. Then I can pay even more. That's creative so finance. I just did a deal where it was like zero down, zero. So now I'm going to use examples to try to illustrate my point to help them Here, understand. Here's what I love about this, Jerry, right? Like, so there's so many different rules about negotiation. And one of the biggest rules that I have is that all of the rules are flexible because you're dealing with humans. There's 8 billion people on the planet. Guess what? What didn't work with this person may actually work with this one, right? So I try not to be dogmatic, but there are certain foundations you do. You, there's a rule that, well, you can't offer a big number and then negotiate backwards. You just did, right? So you offered something and then you were like, oh, well, you could do it like this. And you're so good at just navigating the conversation. It's like someone could drop you at any point in the conversation, no matter how messed up it is, right? And in this case, the conversation's going great. But even if they were, you're gonna find a way to course correct and redirect. And I think that's, from this call, that's one of my biggest takeaways so far, guys, is that it does not matter what's happening in a conversation. You can start from scratch, the next word that comes out of your mouth mm -hmm. and you can make the conversation go whatever direction you want it to go. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Interest, just a principal payment. And we paid like way over its current value. Oh, wow. Because no in the long run, yeah, because I, I win in the long run because I'll hold it for a long time. And then eventually, you know, it's going to go up in value and rents are going to go up. And, but I was able to get into a deal without having to come up with a bunch of cash. Because I got to go to my investors now and justify bringing cash to a deal. So, like, if I say to them, "Hey, I got this great property in Galveston," they're gonna, and I got to come in with all cash. I mean, I'm gonna need to be probably under 500 for them to want to do that. Love so it. there's my anchor. Yep. I finally got to it. Yeah. What I'm trying to now do is create a huge disparity between cash and creative. Yep. And you blame the third party for that offer too. That wasn't yeah, you, my investors was are going to want a really yep. good deal with cash. And yeah. it's true, like cash always has to be rock bottom. A lot of cash. Right. Yeah, that's not going to work for you. Right? So like I mean, what do you think about that? What do you think about 625, 5% down, 3% rate, 30-year loan? And at this point I gave up on him giving me a number. I just don't think he's going to give me a number. Yeah. So then I, I finally I got to my offer. 625, 5% down, 3% rate, 30 yeah. year. Oh, like I said, I'm gonna have to sit down and think about this. Like right now I just walked into a gym class for my daughter. So uh -huh. like, let me call you back when I get out of this. And okay. about an hour and I'll call you right back. Let me just, just have a little deal that parents have to be here, so. 
I did not want yeah, to get off the okay. uh, no, give... Do you have my number? Is so, it tell the me... one, uh, 2696? Yeah, 2696, yep. I should be here for another hour. But, okay. Uh, definitely call me because I'm calling other people and we're trying to buy a house in your neighborhood, and I don't want to miss out on this if you're serious. You know what I mean? No, I'm de- I, like I said, I'm dead serious. I just... It's kind of like a bad timing walking in all this, but yeah, definitely. I'm definitely serious. So I don't know if you guys caught that, but I use that quite a bit. Like, Hey, this isn't, this isn't an unlimited offer. This offer doesn't stand forever. Yeah. You may call me back in five minutes and we've already bought another property and, and it's the, the offers off the table. Yeah. And honestly, my offers are off the table because I don't know what's going on. I don't know where I'm at with things. I don't know if I'm, if you know, like, yeah. So an offer is always off the table the minute you say no or later or whatever. Sure. Because now maybe we got to renegotiate. Anyway. It's scarcity, right? If yeah. it's always available, they can get around yeah. to it. And, there's and no then emergency. they never will. Yep. I got, We're I almost got done. You. I got you. So you will call me back in an hour? Yeah, I'll give you, definitely give you a call back. As soon as she's finished here, I'll definitely give you a call back. Yeah. Okay. Then let's do definitely. that. And what we'll do in the meantime is I'll, I'll pencil some of these numbers out so I can tell you like what that would look like. Okay, like, perfect. That'd be awesome. Stuff. Oh, that'd be super awesome. Yep. Awesome. Like, just give me like 30 minutes, you know, 30, 45 minutes. And I'll definitely give you a call back. Okay. Thank you, Steven. Talk to no, you thank minute. you. And sorry, sorry, sorry. Like I said, I just kind of, yeah, kind of well, like that really? time. <laughs> he's, at some, he's at his daughter's okay, gymnastics or something like that. Yeah. Okay, bye. All right, all right, bye. So I wish, I wish I had the second call. So what happened was is, uh, I go on and keep doing the thing. And then that was my very last one at the day at like five o'clock. Really? And he called back and I had, I had, uh, when he called me back, I pulled up my creative finance sheet Okay. and we plugged in the numbers and we talked for maybe another half an hour. Really? And then he, he went with it with the 5%, three, 5% down, 3% rate. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so funny guys, right? Like, you know, when it, it, emphasizes to me the importance of what we discussed previously. It's the confidence and the control. Because once you have that, you can genuinely navigate anything. This was my suspicion, and we're continuing to see this unfold as we listen to these calls, is if I had to guess, why is Jerry so good? Well, when I look at your personality and I listen to you briefly on a call, you're just so good at navigating whatever pops up. And it does not matter, right? It's just a ping pong match. You're just gonna swing, doesn't matter how fast they hit that thing back, you're swinging back. And I think that's really, really huge. So for guys, for those of you guys who are watching this thing, you guys are all going to be at different places. You guys might hear Jerry's style and be like, you know what? I can do that. That matches my personality. I'm going to do these things. But if you're not Jerry, that's okay, right? Just learn the fundamental principles that, that exist in what Jerry does that you can extract and start deploying in your conversations, right? So what are some of those? One of them is the confidence, right? Be in confidence and control in every conversation. Stay in control of the conversation. What's the third one that we saw here that was huge? Don't get off track if you say something wrong or if you make a mistake Mm -hmm. or if you throw something out there and it doesn't work. It's not the end of the world, just course correct. A person who's in control of the situation is not gonna fall apart the second it didn't go the way they planned. They're just gonna have a backup. Even if you don't know what your backup is going to be, guys, when you're new and you're in this conversation, you may be bubbling up inside and completely collapsing on the inside. That's fine. But on the outside, they need to hear a composed and confident person. The second you hang up that call, you can freak out. But while you're on the call, sound as confident as you need to. And guess what? If you don't have an answer, you guys want the magic trick. Here's the magic trick if you don't have an answer. You know what it is? You know what, Jerry? I'm not sure. Before I say something that I'm not sure about, how about this? Let me just figure that out and then I can just call you back. Does that work? The Hmm? easiest out ever. Easiest out ever, right? You can go, you can freak out, you can get the answer, you can recompose. Take a deep breath, do a little walk around the neighborhood. (laughs) That's it, right? No one's good. Like just the, the, the goal is staying composure and that's what Jerry does in every single call. Yeah, love that. Well, guys... Hope you got a lot out of that. Uh, really great again, Daniel, going through yeah. the call like that, breaking that down. And guys, as we wrap up this video, a couple of things I want to mention to you is there's some great resources in the description box below this video. You'll see some links to some free scripts and some other free resources. Check those out. They're totally free. You can click those links and download them uh, at your convenience. Also, I'm going to put a link in there to Daniel's training. Now, this is an advanced training on how to become a real estate closer. And I've looked through his course and I've looked at the, the outline and the material and the modules. And this is top notch. Like I'm making, I'm making all of my partners go through this training, Dan, because it's really good. 
And what's great about it is it's, it's designed for real estate, obviously, but you actually go so far as to break it down between different types of leads because those sellers are going to have certain pain points that we know, certain yep. personality and personality traits. You also do training on that yep. and also uh, different exit strategies on market, off market, like everything and anything you need to know yep. about how to get good at this with real estate. So again, I'll put the link to that as well in the description. And guys, be on the lookout. We're, we, I created a playlist. We're putting all of these videos into that playlist. And so to continue learning how to be good at closing, go through the rest of these videos, click that playlist. And as we release them, we'll put them in that playlist. So thank you guys. Leave a comment, let us know what you're learning, what you like, your big takeaways. Please share with us your big takeaways so that we can, we can see if we're bringing you the value that we hope to. And we'll see you guys on the next video.